Hi everyone, welcome to the Carter Containers Project Update. Let me begin by introducing myself. I am Arjuna Shinde and I work at Intel. I also serve on the Carter Containers Architecture Committee. And today I will be joined by Tao Peng, who is also a member of the Carter Architecture Committee and uh, works at Ant Financial. So with that, let's get started. So what are Carter Containers? If you're here, I believe you must be already somewhat familiar with Carter Containers. And we started out the project uh, with a vision to make traditional containers more secure by making use of the security provided by uh, hardware-based virtualization. Essentially, what we do with Kata is we run each container or pod inside a lightweight virtual machine and provide all the necessary plumbing to be completely transparent to the upper container manager or orchestration layers such as Kubernetes. So to lay out a brief history of Kata, now the project itself was started in uh, December of 2017 as a result of the merger of the RunVE project and the Intel Clear Containers project. In uh, May 2018, we came up with our first major release and in April 2019, Kata Containers was confirmed by the Foundation Board as the second project of the OpenStack Foundation. Following that, in April of 2020, we made our second major release where we introduced quite a few architectural improvements. So it's been quite a while since our last update. There's a lot to catch up to. There have been uh, a bunch of uh, new cool features and improvements that have gone in Kata since then. Our last update uh, was in Shanghai OIF Summit uh, back in uh, 2019. There we highlighted a few things. Uh, architectural support for S390X was added. And there were uh, some operability and improvements as well in terms of adding support for agent tracing so that uh, now the entire Kata stack could be traced from end to end, from the host side to the guest side. A TC filter was made as a default network mechanism and we also added uh, initial support for the container D uh, shim v2 architecture. There were hypervisor improvements as well. Uh, support for Acon was added, Firecracker JLS support as well as what I resoc. A lot of new releases have uh, been made since then. Uh, as I mentioned, we made a second uh, major release in October of 2020, where we introduced quite a few breaking changes. Now, while we are working on uh, 2.x, we continue to support uh, 1.x for a while in order to support users that were using uh, Kata uh, 1.x in production. Now, in May 2021, we made the decision to drop uh, Kata 1.x and instead uh, we focused all our energies and efforts uh, on the 2.x releases itself. As of May 2020, our last release was uh, 2.4.1 and uh, the alpha release for 2.5.0. So if we take a look at the progress that we've made since Jan 2020, we have seen an impressive growth in the number of contributions from several organizations. We are also seeing a lot more diversity in the contributions as more and more people are adopting Kata and they are using Kata in production. We have seen a, a good increase in the number of pull requests as well as healthy discussions around uh, what should go into the next Kata release. So with that, let's uh, take a look at the major changes that went into Kata 2.0. The most important architectural change that was done was the Trim V2 architecture. I'll uh, talk about this in uh, some detail in the next slide. Next, uh, the Kata agent, uh, which is the agent that runs inside the VM and handles all of the sandbox and container lifecycle management within the VM, was rewritten in Rust. Now, this uh, rewrite was from uh, Golang to Rust and uh, this gave us significant reductions in the memory overhead and reduced overall attack surface as well. On the same lines, uh, the agent protocol, which is uh, the protocol that runtime uses to communicate with the agent, was simplified to use TTRPC from GRPC. Now, TT TTRPC is a much uh, lighter weight protocol as compared to GRPC. Um, a new component called uh, Kata Monitor was added to improve observability and uh, manageability. Uh, this tool can be used with uh, other tools in the Kubernetes ecosystem, such as Prometheus, in order to gather useful container metrics from Kata. Uh, another tool, uh, developer tool called Agent Cuttle was added, uh, which helped us to validate the agent API 
as we continue to make improvements to it. Uh, what IFS now? What IFS is a file, uh, a shared file system that Red Hat came up with. And in 2.0, we made the decision to make this uh, as a default. And we deprecated the WhatIO 9P uh, protocol, which was no longer being maintained. Now, with the shift to WhatIFS, we saw uh, better POSIX compliance and also uh, better performance in general. So, as I mentioned earlier, one of the major changes in uh, Kata 2.0 was the Shim V2 architecture being made the default, with the support for the earlier architecture being dropped completely. Now, earlier architecture was uh, uh, basically replicating the Rancy way of doing things. It wasn't very efficient for Kata that made use of VA, VM uh, sandboxes to replicate what exactly Rancy does. So because of the assumptions of this architecture, we also had to have at least one or more host processes for every uh, process, container process that is running inside the guest. So what this means is that if there are N processes which are running inside the guest, um, it meant uh, we had to have at least N plus one processes on the host side. Now the Shim V2 architecture, uh, which is something that uh, folks in the Container D community came up with, it is much more suited for sandbox runtimes such as Kata and GWiser. It makes no assumptions about uh, processes that are running on the host and it introduces APIs which are left to the container runtime to implement. So for example, uh, um, an API such as uh, GetMetrics was left to the Kata runtime to implement rather than making an assumption that there's a host process uh, running which would provide the metrics instead. So with this, it was also possible to have a single process which is called the container D shim kata v2 process running for every pod uh, uh, inside the guest. So this reduced uh, the memory overhead as well as uh, overall complexity as well. So we later worked with the Cryo community to have this implemented on the Cryo side as well. And with that, uh, both Cryo and Containerd supporting this, we made this as a default architecture in Kata 2.0. So let's talk about all the features that were introduced in the later 2.x releases. We added quite a few features uh, to improve performance. One of them was the NIDIS uh, image acceleration service. Now this is a new uh, image service that uh, brings in uh, significant uh, among them was the container image lazy loading for both uh, Chemo and Cloud Hypervisor. Now Tarpeng will talk about this in some detail in uh, the following slides. Uh, in addition to that, we also um, uh, made uh, rather closed all the gaps in our VFIO device pass through. To make sure that Kata works correctly with uh, device plugins such as SRV and uh, also to support the DPDK use case. Uh, moving on, we added support for direct assigned uh, volume. Now, what does this mean? Uh, now, since Kata makes use of uh, virtual machines, passing in a block device is much more performant and efficient rather than passing in entire volumes, uh, which are then passed to Kata using a shared file system such as what IFS. So now with that in mind, we worked with other open source communities such as uh, Kubernetes and Containerd to make sure that volumes that are backed by block devices are passed uh, directly to Kata. So the responsibility of mounting these devices uh, is left to Kata and these uh, devices are uh, no longer mounted on the host side. Lastly, we added support for uh, huge pages. This again ties into our uh, DPDK use case. And finally, uh, we added uh, support for disk and network rate limiting for Cloud Hypervisor. Now, this feature is important in terms of performance as it helps reduce the noisy neighbor problem and ensures that your workload is IO isolated from all other workloads that are running on the same machine. Now, in terms of security, we made several improvements. We worked with both the Cryo and Containerd communities to have SE Linux support, uh, support implemented end-to-end uh, -end for Kata. What this entailed was uh, adding a separate SE Linux profile uh, specific to Kata. So uh, this profile was more suitable for hypervisor-based uh, runtimes. Now, uh, a lot of work went into this, and uh, we have an excellent talk from uh, Fabiano Fidencio on this at the OIF Summit at Berlin. 
Now, in addition to SE Linux, we also added support for SECOM and also a support for rootless hypervisor. Um, in uh, Wonderdex, we added a support for uh, running rootless, but this feature, uh, namely the rootless hypervisor, allows the hypervisor itself to run with minimum privileges, even when uh, the runtime itself is called with root privileges. Now, with respect to compatibility, we have added uh, quite a few features, including support for IPv6, which helped us uh, integrate well, well with uh, Red Hat's OpenShift. Um, we also added support for NERD CTL and uh, what IMM. Now, what IMM is a new power virtualized mechanism for adding or removing memory to and from a virtual machine. Uh, Tao Peng will uh, talk uh, about the rest of the topics uh, in this slide in much more detail, including uh, I notify support for uh, secrets and config maps, uh, config maps in Kubernetes. Now, in addition to all of the extensive uh, feature ads, uh, there were a few deprecations as well. We have already talked about the first two, uh, namely 90 and the uh, shim v2 being made the default. Uh, what we did was uh, we deprecated Chemulite as well. Uh, Chemulite was a lightweight uh, uh, version of Chemu that we had introduced after getting rid of all of the legacy code and uh, devices that are no longer uh, applicable to container workloads. Now we dropped this hypervisor as most of these uh, downstream improvements were merged upstream. With that, uh, NetMon, which is a network monitoring tool that we used with Docker, uh, was dropped as well as it was no longer required. And uh, finally, uh, from a developer point of view, we moved uh, to a mono repo model. So what, what we did was we moved uh, all our code and document repositories into a single repo, and this greatly simplified our uh, CI and release process as well. Um, now, this shows uh, all of the dependency versions that the latest Kata version is compatible with. We try to keep up with the latest and greatest uh, tools in the container ecosystem. So this just gives a snapshot of the various uh, components that Kata works with. In terms of architecture updates, uh, for the x86 uh, platform, we added support for Intel uh, TDX, Intel SGX, as well as support for AMD SEV. Uh, this all ties into our confidential computing use case. Now with confidential computing, we have uh, enhanced a threat model, so as to make sure that the container workload itself is protected from the host by running the container workload inside a hardware-based uh, trusted execution environment. For the ARM platform, uh, we made uh, quite a few improvements. We added support for NVDIM plus DAX, which allows the VM root FS to be passed in uh, by, by, by passing the host page cache. Another improvement was uh, adding support for vCPU hot plug and what I am in. Uh, for hardware accelerators, we added support for Intel uh, Q80, uh, Intel GPUs, and NVIDIA GPUs. SPDK, uh, vhost user target, uh, was also added. Uh, this helps in to run your high performance user mode applications. So with that, I'll uh, hand it over to Topping to talk in detail about some of our key feature highlights. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Achana. Hi, everyone. My name is Topping. I'm a staff engineer from AIM Group. I'm also part of the Kata Containers Architecture Committee. Let me continue with our recent feature highlights. During the 2.0 timeframe, we have re rewritten Kata Agent with Rust and replaced the communication, communication protocol between runtime and agent from, T from gRPC to TTRPC. And again, the benefit is obvious and we have reduced the RSS of Kata Agent from 11 megabytes down to 300 kilobytes. 
we also added a new new node-wide component called cut monitor to collect the cut specific metrics and present it to external services. Cut monitor will be responsible for collecting metrics from different cut cut schemes processes and present them to external services such as permissions. In the 2.x time frame, we have also ended a notify support for Qatar Canaries watch per month. Watch per month is a special month that is defined by Qatar Canaries, and uh, we have we have an exam to identify certain communities, volumes, and uh, make them watchable for the run for the containers. This is, this is done through making the kata agent process to periodically pull for changes in the kata in the kata volumes and uh, present them via uh, term uh, pfs in the guest and then kata agent uh, the kata containers applications can use and notify to monitor for such changes this is introduced mainly because vertifs cannot support and the remote file sharing protocol they cannot support a uh, notify but we would like to provide such functionality to the users and so we uh, we've ended it also we have ended a direct vo block volume assignment support mm. we, without it currently color canals will present uh, all their vol volumes through virtual FS, but uh, it is slower than virtual block. So folks are working on to present the block volume directly to the to the, to the applications inside color containers. This is done by defining a color specific mount info the JSON file and put it inside the volume volume direct directory on the host and then cut containers the color scheme will analyze analyze the JSON file and uh, find out the block device on the host and pass it to the guest via a virtual block. Th this require this work requires a specialized CSI driver and and uh, this will be open sourced as a sub project in the Kata, the Kata, Kata community as well. Also, we have integrated a CSF container image laser pooling project called NIDAS in the in Kata containers. With it, we can we can launch Kata containers in a constant time. Such as less than five seconds, regardless of the container image size, because without the pooling, we will have to pull the entire container container image, and it will cost a lot of time when we start when we first start the color containers. Also, we have added a new component called Run K to start a Linux standard Linux container where based on Kata agent. This is this will be uh, this is currently a, an experimental feature and uh, as we can see because Runkey is based on it is written with Rust, it is it obviously is faster than Run C and it, it costs Smaller, it has smaller memory footprint, footprint than Run C, but there of obviously there is still room to improve comparing it with C Run, which is written in C language. But uh, because because we Run K is in Rust, we can gain the Rust features, such as we do not have to look for memory leaks or different sigma signal for such as such bugs in run key. Also some updates about cut testing. 
we have group we have a group of people working on a so called green sea efforts project within Kata containers we have defined all we have defined all the Kata CI jobs and uh, assign different maintainers of different jobs and uh, with with the, these folks hard work we have a quite stable CI for within the project right now. Also some updates on the architecture committee we have gone through several rounds of elections in the past few years and the latest architecture community committee member uh, this Ashina from Intel, Eric from Ampo, Fabiano also from Intel, Topin myself from Amp Group and also Samuel from Rivers. And we have seen this developers from these companies contributing to the project. This is an expanding list of companies and uh, we are currently it's a little more, a little more than 30 and uh, we expect to see more folks from different community, different companies come to contribute to the project. Also, some updates about card users. We have we have queried a few use cases from different enterprise users, such as Angu. They are running online applications and bench shops on thousands of production nodes with cut containers. And uh, the claim to achieve carbon neutrality in last year and the cut containers was one of the key technologies that helped them to achieve it. And they are working on a best practice white paper that will be published during the summit time. And also Baidu, uh, they offer air card and edge computing services and massive scale with card containers. And uh, Extotanium, they are a startup work using card containers to implement, implement a new cloud resource management technology. And IBM is is using Kata Cleaners for their CICD workloads and Huawei is running Kata Cleaners in production in their cloud container instance service and also their cloud container engine services. And Lostflake is using Kata, Kata Cleaners to deploy untrusted workloads. So, so, so they do not have to worry about container escape events and color vulnerabilities. And new features is using color containers to deliver a serverless framework for cloud and edge resources. And last but not, not least, Red Hat is, has integrated color containers in their OpenShift product and uh, provide additional isolation with the same cloud native user experiences to their production users. And our future plans. Currently, there are some major ongoing changes within the Kataclaners community. The first one is confidential computing. It, it is a feature that expands Kataclaners thread model from protect, protecting the host infrastructure to also protecting their workloads. Also, we are rewriting Kata runtime with Rust. So this will vastly reduce Kata containers resource overhead on the host and enables a new use case such as, such as function compute, computing that uh, requires a lot, of, a, a lot of density on the host. And we are working on integrating Introducing an integrated VMM in the with, with the Rust, Rustified runtime. This will be a highly customer customized Rust VMM built built in into the Rustified cut runtime to simplify deployment and operability of cut containers. And we view this as a step forward to virtualization for the cloud native use case. With this major ongoing changes. We are expecting expecting a new major Kata Canaries release 3.0 to 
had to be happening on October this year. And let's take a look at the confidential computing use case. This will be using catalyst and the key component to run a run, run a trusted trusted domain VM or SEV or or uh, an SEVM for the workloads so that processes on the host cannot see memory or data of their workloads in the guest. And also the justified cut runtime and integrated VM. We are building them into a single process. So we so in future we will have cut runtime, the hypervisor, the the guest, the agent, all running in the same process on the host. Without further ado, we have we still have a lot of channels for folks who are interested in the community project to reach out to us. We have a we have the we have a website for it. We please also we see our GitHub repository and uh, you you can reach out to us with IRC with Stack Twitter or and also many list. So if you have any interest. If you have any interest or if you have any questions, please reach out to us with these channels and uh, we look forward to see more folks and to join the community. Thank you everyone.